In the season of Conquest KVK, you live and die by your crystal technology. So in this video, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the sequence of technologies you should research, whether you're free to play or pay to win, and yeah, we'll even cover some ways to get crystals. So let's freaking go. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and in this video sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, we're going to give you everything you need to know about crystal technology prioritization and how to get a few extra crystals. We made the most watched crystal video during the original release of the crystal system, and since that's changed a little bit, we're overdue for making a new guide. So let's get this started by talking about the very first place you should spend your crystals, which is the crystal mine. This will pay dividends for you in terms of the amount of crystal return you get for crystals spent. Yes, you are going to convert your resources into crystals. You take this building straight to 25 and you don't look back. Whether you're free to play or pay to win, this is value and you should do this as fast as you can. Of course, you're also going to work on your crystal research center. The crystal research center, however, does not need to be as high level if you are a low spender or free to play because i'm going to max all of my technology i went straight away and maxed the crystal research center in general the return on investment for this crystal cost reduction that you see here is actually not all that amazing so you're going to be spending probably more crystals than you'll save by upgrading the crystal research center at some point your technology will require you to upgrade this thing a little bit anyways but unless you're gonna like max out all your tech there's probably a break-even point that you could calculate maybe it's somewhere around level 22 uh, in fact if somebody does that exact math leave a comment down below so now that we've got your buildings sorted out and what you'll do at the very start the question is how much do you tech up and which tech do you focus on and that depends on when passes are opening if we just get a quick look, we're in Heroic Anthem right now, and depending on when you're about to have a big fight, it is going to shift your focus. I'm going to make a uh, sort of argument that when you're far away from a pass opening, like the fight we'll have over here or over here, you should focus on your economic tech. And as you get closer to being in a fight, then you focus on your war tech because at that point, you're not going to get a return on your investment for the crystals that you use in economic technology. And that, by the way, is a clue to what I think is very, very valuable for your tech, and that is your economic tech, things that give you value over time. Now, everything in here gives you value. Even the combat abilities are giving you value in terms of less resources you'll spend healing and more resources the enemy is going to have to heal uh, because, yes, they're taking more damage, right? Uh, but there are economic technologies I'd recommend right at the start, and let's get into what a few of those are. The first thing that is really important is skillful operation. This is just going to straight up reduce your crystal cost for further research, and the earlier you invest in this, the more benefit you're going to get from it. So maxing out skillful operation to 5 out of 5, and as a spender, going in and taking skillful operation 2, to 7 out of 10 was my very first priority. And by the way, if you want to see me doing this in real time, I'll have a card up in the top where I was making all of these choices in a live stream uh, to show you exactly the thought process in perhaps greater detail. So I started by going to Skillful Operation, and I'm going to go with the full pay-to-win route real quick, and then we'll, we'll cut back and talk about free-to-play and low spend, okay? But after I got Skillful Operation, reducing... The maximum amount, as was reasonable, the crystal cost for all of the research I was doing, I hit a point where I kind of had to stop because this is going to require a chain of other things, which we probably need to talk about. Uh, the crystal technology is going to have prerequisites for some of it and for certain levels of it. So at some point, the amount of prerequisites I would have to do to actually advance skillful operation to any further, it's just prohibitive. I need to switch gears and work on other things and eventually double back to take this further. So the next thing I went and I worked on is treaties and also cultural exchange. The reason I really like treaties and cultural exchange is because they are working on your economy yet again. You earn more crystals from Bastion Quests. This is strictly economy. You get more favor from Bastion Quests using cultural exchange. 
which in turn lets you level up your bastions more and get more crystals. We'll talk about that in a bit. But this was the second thing I did before I even did a single bastion quest on day one. Max Treaties 1, Max Cultural Exchange 1, and I even went in, and I Max Treaties 2 and Cultural Exchange 2. Now, that's maybe uh, beyond the point where I'll get a full return on my investment before uh, the past five opens and I'm doing my first round of fighting, but I'm trying it out this KVK and we'll see how I like it. The next economic technology that I can wholeheartedly recommend is Plunder 1 and 2. This gives you more crystals when you defeat Kahars, which also has a really solid return on your investment over the course of KVK. I went and I maxed the first tier of Plunder, took it to 5 out of 5. That did require, I think, first aid, and perhaps at some point I had to do larger camps, 3 out of 5 there. And also, I took Plunder 2 all the way up to 7, and this is probably where I should stop before Pass 5 opens. There's probably not a return on investment for the number of Kahars I'm going to summon in battle by the time that the first fighting starts. And, I mean, look, it's going to be a lot of fighting, so i got to put a lot of crystals into combat-related stuff. Now, the final piece of economic-related technology for crystal technology is, in fact, Barbarian Reports. Your ability to slay barbarians effectively. And sure, there's a minor amount of optimization here in terms of the amount of resources you save on repairs when you go and battle barbarians, which you should be doing all the time because those two give crystals, right? Uh, but if you are going to do AOE barb farming, uh, using a technique I've explained in the past, I'll have a card up in the top for that video if you'd like to check that out, I would recommend that you work a good bit on your barbarian reports so that you can actually do that effectively and that is an economic boon, saving you a ton of action points, getting you a ton of crystals, but you do have to spend a lot of time and have commanders that are uh, really good for that activity in a great place. Now, if you were free to play, obviously you're not going to have as many crystals to work with on day one where I went and I purchased everything that was offered to me, which is a little bit crazy. No, I would recommend still, though, that you focus on Skillful Operation 1 if you're free to play. I would recommend that you focus on getting your treaties and cultural exchange to a good place so that when you start doing Bastion quests, you've at least put a bunch of crystals into that and you can get a little bit further than you would have otherwise or get a little bit of return above and beyond what you would have done otherwise when you go and you do all your Bastion quests, which of course you are going to do 15 out of 15 Bastion quests every day, right? Continue to focus on some of this economic technology in the first couple days and as you get closer to the pass opening, shift gears and go for some of the war tech that you think will be most helpful for you, focusing in again on the ones that uh, are most valuable to you. So if it's infantry that you're using primarily, then yeah, focus a little bit on some of those infantry stats so that when you go and fight, you've got more of that available to you. I do want to mention, however, and this is very important, that the first levels of a lot of these uh, research items are actually really, really, really low crystal cost. So you may want to sort of surge your way through the tree just to unlock a bunch of things for a very cheap amount of crystals, which is something that I myself did. Getting very far into the tree, getting the first one or two levels of things is just incredibly cheap. I mean, 100,000 crystals is a very low cost and you get a little bit of boost here. I know it's just half a percent of troop capacity, but it is a just tiny amount of crystals compared to what you will be paying later for some equivalent boosts. So it's probably worth considering as you're getting closer to the pass opening, just surging your way through the tree, just unlocking some of the base levels of things, getting bare minimum prerequisites done so that you can get the base levels for a really cheap crystal value. Now, at this point, we've talked about where you can spend your crystals to boost your economy, right? It's sort of influencing the rate at which you're getting crystals. We've also found ways to reduce your crystal costs, which is really important. But the other thing you can do to improve your crystal technology is to just get more crystals. So what are all the ways that you can get crystals? I think a couple things we need to talk about includes barbarians and forts, which now drop a bunch of crystals. Uh, some people would recommend that you spend a lot of action points battling barbarians and barbarian forts to get a ton of these crystals. And the sooner you do that, obviously, the more you get to enjoy the crystal tech for the rest of your KVK. There is very much a weird balance here because in further zones in the KVK, you will get more crystals for the exact same amount of action points. 
So it's a little bit of a balance that you'll need to play, deciding whether or not you want to spend a lot of action points really early to get a jump start on your crystals, or doing it in zones when it's really much more advantaged because the level of the barbs and forts is higher. But something that everybody should be doing is going and getting their caves and villages if you're in Heroic Anthem KVK. Uh, that's where you're literally going around the map clearing all the fog all over again, visiting the villages, and scouting every single one of these stinking caves, which sounds like a bit of a chore, but if I just open one treasure of cave here, I mean, one and a half thousand crystals, and 200 action points is nice. Here's another... Wait, no crystals? Okay, well, I got kind of wrecked on that one. That's, that's a little bit of a disappointment. Three more treasures of cave here, and I got... 3,000 crystals and, okay, tiny amount of gems. But you get the idea. Going and exploring and getting all of that for free is a way to convert your time into crystals, which is not so bad. And along the sort of lines of time into crystals, there are bastion quests that you can get done. Those bastion quests are going to reward you crystals. Thankfully, a couple months ago, they made a change where you can refresh your bastion quests much more frequently. I would strongly recommend that if there's a Bastion quest you don't like, like, oh, man, I really hate to turn in materials, then you can refresh to find a better one. And there are quests that give more crystals than others, uh, but they are generally more expensive in some other way. So, for example, this Bastion quest for rallying Barbarian Forts is giving me 22,500 crystals and a Kahar Bone Whistle, which, by the way, you summon a Kahar and battle it down, you'll get crystals too. Uh, but other quests, for example, this one here is giving me 45,000 crystals and a Kahar Bone Necklace. So some will give more favor and more crystals than other. And as you level up, basically favor is experience for your bastions. As you level up your bastions, you will get more crystal mining speed. This is really, really important. Really important. Because this is how you're going to turn resources into crystals. And you can do that 100% free to play. Now, I mentioned that you can summon Kahars using the Bone Whistle over here. You'll want to use the best march you've got to try to take that down. And you'll want to hold off on doing this for as long as possible uh, so that you get closer and closer to when the pass is actually going to open. And really what I'm hunting for is that you've maxed out the plunder, as at least as far as you wanted to take that plunder technology, which is going to give you more crystals for doing this. Also, the more you've advanced your barbarian battling technology, the easier it's going to be to battle these things down and get the reward. And obviously, the fewer marches you spend battling on these things, uh, the less action points you're spending. And to that end, in case you didn't know, you can do area of effect damage on a regular barbarian. It will aggro the Kahar, and then it'll start attacking you. Essentially, you're paying a small amount of action points, a barbarian worth of action points, to also get the Kahar, when normally those are like, 200 action points, it's a good bit more expensive. Now, if you are going the pay-to-win uh, route with crystals, or even just paying a little bit, the very first thing you'll want to get is absolutely no questions asked, the premium season crystal supply. The big benefit of this is not actually getting crystals every day, which is nice, but it is actually having the 50% uh, increase to your mine speed. This is the biggest deal. The crystal mine work speed of 50% is massive. And you can see that boost when you look at your crystal mine. The season supply 50% boost is really a nice jump start for your season. There are also pop-up bundles, which I went and I picked up every one of those. Those are generally really good value for your crystals. And a part of what's so amazing about that is you get that right at the start of KVK if you are going to spend on that giving you a really solid jumpstart on your economic technology like I did. Now, there is also a Mountain War bundle. Whenever a pass opens, you can get something like 9.5 or maybe 9.8 million crystals from this bundle. And I think that costs, if I remember correctly, something like 185 bucks to go and do that. Maybe it's one of those 385 bundles. Uh, but for a pretty meaningful amount of money, you can get a lot of crystals when a pass is going to open. So that is another way you can really surge your tech a lot, which is something I plan to be purchasing. And there is also a daily bundle that you can get. Uh, this is something you can only buy, I think, $35 worth every single day. And that is a super value bundle, the Conqueror's Will. It's another way to get 
some additional crystals to tech up just a little bit more. Truly the most important takeaway from this video is understanding that balance of when you focus on the economic technology and when you shift gears to focus on the war-related technology. And this all depends on when your first fight or next fight is going to be. That will help you get sort of your maximum return on investment from these technologies. And I honestly may have overcommitted a little bit on treaties and cultural exchange. Like maybe that is a little bit of a, I don't know, too many crystals spent and not enough of a return there. I'll just call out one last advantage of working on these things is that you'll unlock the support skills from Bastion sooner. And if you're in Heroic Anthem KVK, that is kind of a big deal, but a topic for a separate video to understand and unpack all of these support skills. In fact, I have a card up in the top for a video dedicated to this exact topic. And if you're looking for more information about any of the stuff we talked about today, then tap that info button in the upper right and it will show you all of the videos that we've recommended check them out. If you found this video helpful or learned a thing or two, then throw a like on here and consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom and leave a comment down below if there's anything else about crystal technology that I really should have talked about or tips and tricks that you have to get more crystals.